Well, good morning and welcome to church this morning. Pleasure to be able to worship with you. Uh, today in Kempville, it is a beautiful, currently a beautiful and sunny day. It's a wonderful day to give thanks to God for the miracle of the resurrection. We're in the sixth, is it the sixth Sunday of Easter? Yeah, sixth Sunday of Easter. Um, and it's also a special day that uh, Christians created, uh, Mother's Day, a day that we give thanks for those uh, biological mothers who bore us, and also for those spiritual mothers who carry us along in faith. It is such a gift that God chose uh, a family, a mother and a father, to reveal his will in this world. What a gift it is that we have mothers. And I understand that sometimes uh, mothers may not have been able to give us all the love that we required, uh, being of uh, a human, um, but we give thanks for them in the ways that they have reflected the mother heart of our Father God. So today in the service, we'll be saying some special prayers in thanksgiving for those women who bore us in this world and those who spiritually have nourished us. Let us take a moment of holy silence as we prepare our minds and our hearts to worship our Lord. Lord, open our lips. O oh God, make speed to save us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died... He died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia! Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by man came death, by a man has also come the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. And we'll have the reading from the Old New Testament. The reading from the New Testament is from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 to 48. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Here ends the lesson. I invite you to stay with me Psalm 98 by the half verse. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. He has remembered his steadfast love in faithfulness to the house of Israel. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the floods clap their hands. Let the hills sing together for joy. He 
He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me. I chose you. And I appointed you to go and to bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you for gathering us virtually. Thank you that your spirit is not confined by uh, physical uh, structures, that you can be with all of us in our homes. And though we yearn to worship corporately, and Lord, as we continue to worship virtually, would you be drawing our hearts closer to the hearts of those Christians in our world that cannot worship openly, those who are confined to basements and industrial complexes and people's homes, and sometimes in fear for their very lives. Lord, would you help us to understand and have compassion for our brothers and sisters across this world who cannot worship openly. And Lord, we pray now that you would be working on our hearts and our heads to understand your word. Draw us into your word, which gives life. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Uh, my eldest daughter is turning five very soon. Hi, Audrey. Uh, I remember the day that we brought her home, um, and I had to go down, and you, uh, you have to get a car seat, right? And it's got to be certified, it's got a little label on the, on the back of it, and then you have to get an instruction manual that's uh, bigger than a manual for a computer. And you, you go into the car, and you got to find, there's, there's, you know, the locking joints down at the bottom, and then there's a strap that goes across the top and locks into the bottom. Anyway, or you can do the seatbelt method, and it has to go through these certain holes, and et cetera, et cetera. It takes a long time, even for someone who is um, handy and, you know, average intelligence, to get a car seat uh, secured into a vehicle. And then you're given this little, Audrey was um, eight, oh gosh, I'm going to get this, anyway, eight pounds plus, and she's this tiny little thing, and she goes in this giant seat, and you have to put these little buckles on, and, and then she's secure. I have to tell you, when I was doing that, it seemed ludicrous. I just wanted to, you know, have my wife hold the baby on the drive home. Like, why are we doing all of this nonsense? She's, she's more strapped into the car than, than her mother and I are. And it's interesting, as you think about those structures, uh, we, are, uh, we were legally required to install that, that seat correctly and also to strap her in. These, it's a four-point strap. Still is a four-point strap. Um, we are required to do that by law. 
It's interesting, when I, was, when I was putting it in, I thought to myself, this is ridiculous. You know, it's not necessary. But years ago, not that long ago, but several decades ago, before these seats uh, were made uh, law, many children died because they didn't have these kind of safety requirements. They just didn't exist. I don't know about you, but my brother and I rolled around in our car you know, it was, and then eventually we had to put seatbelts on, but it wasn't a big deal. And we didn't have, the car seats weren't a thing. It's interesting that uh, a parent's love, my love for my daughter, was not enough to ensure her safety. I needed a law in place to abide by, to guide me in the right direction. My emotions, my feelings, what I, what I thought was right, was not enough. I needed a law, a command, to help protect my child. Today, our Lord talks to us about commands. And sometimes we think about commands and we're like, oh man, they're just like, they're so constraining. You know, it's like a wet blanket or, you know, the Lord comes in and it's a party and then he's just, he's, he's oh, you can't do any of that stuff that's fun. Sometimes we think of commands as, as a wet blanket on life, but that's not what it is at all. Our Lord opens or attempts to open our mind here to understand the true nature of his commands. He says that we are to abide in his love. That is, we are to live in and exist in, inhabit a place of knowing that we are loved. And the way to do that, Jesus says, is by following his commands. Some of you may, have, uh, may know from research or maybe from personal experience, there are places in our world that have gone through uh, sort of modern wars where there are minefields, where the mines are um, they're unmarked, and there's no maps to tell people where they are to, to take them out. And so there's huge sections of land in our world uh, that, are, that are fenced off with signs on them that say, do not enter minefield. And the fences are not to keep people in, but actually to keep people out. And the fences are, the ones that I have seen, are not tall. You can jump them. You could read that sign that says, danger, minefield, keep out. And you could choose to jump the fence and go for a stroll into this old minefield. When you did that, you would be ignoring the boundary line and the warning in entering into a place that was unsafe. This is kind of a bit of the concept of what a commandment and boundaries that God gives us are. They're placed there not to wreck the party, but to protect us and to keep us in a place where we are abiding in him continually. God gives us boundaries in our lives not to hem us in so that we can't experience wonderful things, but rather so that we remain in his love, so we stay safe in his love. And when we go up to a fence, uh, one of God's boundaries, we read the sign and we choose to jump it, we are moving outside of his boundary. We're moving outside of his love. Now, I need to be clear here that there's no place in this world you can go to get away from God's love, right? It's not as if you jump the fence and God stops loving you. That's not what happens at all. But when you jump that fence, you are exiting some portion of his safety. And you're choosing to live in some kind of danger. And like Adam and Eve said in the garden, the way they acted, we echo when we jump one of God's boundaries their actions. God, you don't know. I know better than you do. I'm going to choose to disobey you by jumping over this boundary that you have provided for me. When we do that, we begin to live in a place of fear or guilt, maybe a place of regret or survival. And we move away from the love of God. Now, the challenging thing about disobeying one of God's commandments is is that a disobedience always is separation. 
if we jump the fence, we move a little bit away from our Lord. So God gives us these boundaries. Jesus says, to abide in my love, just keep my commandments. Stay within the bounds that I provided for you. This is the good place for you to live. To borrow from a, a few Sundays ago where we're talking about the good shepherd. The shepherd brings the sheep to the place that is good, to the green pastures and the still waters, keeps them away from the cliffs and the dangers. God provides the commandments boundaries for our protection and for us to abide in his love. Then what happens when we abide in these commandments and in the love of, of Christ? He says this, it is to change how we live in this world. Jesus says this, that by obedience to his commandments, joy will come and dwell in us. When you think about obedience to commandments, um, and you think, well, who in the world has been the most obedient human being ever? Who has been the one who has said yes to the Father every time? But Jesus has said yes every single time. And what he says here in Scripture is that that joy that he experienced by complete obedience to the commandments of the Father, that, that is the... Um, the the most full joy that any human could ever experience. Jesus says, I give that to you. When you walk in my commandments, when you're abiding in my love, I give you my joy. He says, my joy will be in you, that your joy may be complete. In other words, walking in the commandments isn't just about being aware of God loving us. It's also about Jesus' joy dwelling inside of us, abiding in us, remaining in us. And sometimes when we think about keeping commandments, we can think this is about being slaves or servants. And sometimes people have that... Um, idea about Christians, you know, that we're, we're slaves. We've become, we've been, become conformed to something, and we, we just do things out of duty. But Jesus confronts that thought immediately, and he says, I don't call you servants or slaves any longer. A servant or a slave is given a task. He says, you go and do that and come back. You go and do that and come back. You go and report about that. See who, how that person is doing. The servant has no idea what the master's plans are. They're just given tasks to do. But Jesus says, I call you friends because I've told you what I'm doing. A friend knows what their, their part of the plan is. A friend knows what the grand scheme is, what the purpose, what the goal is. And Jesus here reveals the secret to us. Pay attention, here's the secret. Here's the secret. God's will for our world is revealed in and through his son, Jesus Christ. Through his death and his resurrection. Jesus tells the disciples the secret clearly. It isn't a secret, actually. It's written down in plain sight in Scripture. God's plan for this world. We are no longer servants or slaves, Jesus says. You are my friends because I've revealed my will to you. Being obedient to our Lord, living by his commandments, means that we abide in his love, means that his joy comes to dwell in us and make our joy complete. It means that we are the friends of Jesus because we know that by following his commands, we aren't simply following a bunch of rules. We are taking part, we are participating in the redemption of the world. We are participating in the redemption of the world. We are bringing the kingdom of God here on earth, as the Lord's Prayer says. Every single decision we make in our day that is in obedience to Jesus brings God's kingdom closer. God's kingdom grows and expands every time someone agrees to abide in the love of Christ. 
Every time someone says, I'm going to follow that command. Every time someone is aware of the joy of Jesus Christ dwelling in them, the kingdom expands. My friends, we need commandments. We need them so that we can conform our lives to the holy life of our Lord. And commandments are boundaries that are for our protection. And when we agree with commandments and move in agreement with them, we are saying, yes, Lord. You know better than I do, Lord. I don't understand this, but I know you do. I don't get why I'm supposed to be obedient in this situation, but I know that you do. I know that your wisdom is far beyond my wisdom and that your purposes and plans are beyond what I could ask or imagine. We are invited here to keep the commandments, to live in the love of Jesus, and to experience his joy. Amen. And we'll have the prayers of the people. At the end of each prayer, I, I will say, let us pray to the Lord and invite you to respond with, hear us, Lord of glory. Gracious Lord, we thank you for all the times you mother us, when you love us despite us falling short, when you guide us back to the path we have strayed from, and when you correct us in our wrongdoing. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We give thanks for all the mothers in our lives, for those who gave us life as Mary carried and gave birth to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the mothers who still walk with us and those who have gone to glory, both those to whom we are linked by biology and those who have come into our lives and mothered us. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all mothers who mourn, those who have lost a child, and those unwillingly childless. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear, Hear us, Lord, Lord of Lord. glory. We continue to pray for an end to the pandemic, for healing for the sick, and endurance for medical staff. As the total number of COVID infections globally passed 155 million this week, we pray for all countries struggling with infection. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear yes, us, Lord, Lord of glory. We pray for our incumbent, Father Robert, as he serves us through these difficult times. We also remember the churches of our regional ministry and their priest, Reverend Andrew, our Bishop, Michael Oatlin, and all clergy, wherever they are, as they bring the light of Christ to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray for our Queen Elizabeth, our government, and all in authority, that they may lead us according to God's law. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, Lord of glory. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers and invite you to add now silently or aloud those who are on your hearts. Avalon, Hal, Verna, Grenville, David, George, Harold, Murray, India, Nancy, Maria, John, Anne, Carl, Norma Jean, Jim, Gwen, Anne, Rick and Barbara and their family. We pray also for Jim, his sister Enid and their family as they grieve the passing of their sister Kathy. May she rest in peace to rise in glory. We pray for all who have died, those who will die today and those who mourn their passing. Dear Lord, 
We ask you to help all struggling in the darkness of grief. May they know peace in their pain, joy in their memories, and hope in your endless love. We lay before you these named here and those known to you alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Yes. Mercy. Amen. In the prayer for today, merciful God, you have prepared for those who love you riches beyond imagination. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us today, and uh, God bless you. May you have a blessed week. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm.